Greetings, you two. Forgive the background noise. It's 79 degrees at 516 in the morning. It's, it's warm today. Um, I was recently rereading the Radiance system. I reread the Player's Handbook, which you can get for free legally um, if you want to get a copy, and I recommend you do so if you're a fan of the D20 system. I reread the GM's Guide, which I purchased, and then I did that so I could then read the expansion kit, which I had purchased. <clears throat> and it was quite good. Uh, there will be more details about that at some point in the future. But in the process of reading it, um, I once again encountered one of the core mechanics of the Radiant system, which is that it's a point-based system that the player character uses character points to buy racial abilities or, stare, or, or species abilities, uh, faith abilities, uh, and class abilities. And even with the expansion kit, even abilities if you want to become an immortal. So let's say you're spending your CP, your character points. Um, and your character has two types of life points, if you want to call them that, uh, hit points. And that is the wounds and the vitality. Now the wounds are the meat. They are based on your species. And they're not easy to raise. You don't get many of them. In fact, quite a few classes get no ability to spend CP uh, points to really change them at all. But I mean, some of the classes do, like, you know, barbarians and fighters and things like that. Um, so those are, those are your meat. Those are like, when you fear down to your wound points, then nothing left, you're in trouble. And some abilities attack just the wound points and skip the vitality points. And completely, they're, they're designed to really be dangerous, essentially. And the vitality points are your life essence, but also your luck, your, your, your skill, and I, if I remember correctly, they go up the same amount each level as you go up. And they, that does vary, because you can, like, your, your, your constitution and class abilities can change it as well. Um, but there's a core amount that goes up every single level at the same amount. Um, and I, that's not the first system that uses that mechanic. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's not even the first D20 system that uses that mechanic. The idea that you have wound points and vitality points, that you have meat and you have training and luck and all that stuff attached to it. But you can have lots of abilities in Radiance that require you to expend vitality points to fuel them. When you cast spells, you're using, for the most part, using vitality points to fuel them. Whether it's Divine spells, arcane spells, or psychic abilities. Lots of, and almost every single class, even fighters and barbarian stuff, can spend vitality points to fuel different abilities. It might be, um, so like say, you know, make a, uh, an attack be holy or unholy, or, or give it a, bo a boost to, to an energy type. And magic items in the system also require you to often spend vitality points to fuel the magic item's ability. The magic item gives you an ability, but you have to put your essence in it to power it. Um, and I've never, never been in love with that. I've never been in love with the idea that you are spending your life force to fuel a power. Now, there have been systems within the D20, I believe it was Conan that had it, the, the one that pops into my head right off the bat, which is where the mages of the game had to spend their hit points. They're, they're literally, you know, expending their body's resources for magical abilities. But, the, but the, you know, the barbarian clones of the universe can swing a sword and throw a spear all day long. It doesn't, that doesn't affect their bodies in the least. And I never liked that mechanic. It was supposed to emulate how dangerous and subversive and, you know, evil and things that magic was. It was supposed to give magic a, a bad name because it was supposed to be a system where magic was low powered and not used frequently. Also, why the bad people would often kidnap folks to use their life force to field their magic items, yada, yada, yada. Um, I never really loved that mechanic. Um, in fact, I, I, I have probably, probably expressed in this channel numerous times how much I downright hate it. But because every single class within Radiance and all the monsters and everything and everything else is using vitality to fuel their abilities. The playing field appears at first to be fairly level. But I started to think about it. And one of the problems I'm encountering with this particular situation, one of the reasons I'm making this video is that I am not good at math. Uh, math the maths and I do not, do not get along well. 
So here I'm going to postulate an idea, and I want people to tell me if they think the situation is 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 good or bad, because I frankly am not 100% sure, because again, the maths and I don't get along. So we're going to th th throw up two fighters. Okay, one is going to go for this really dynamic, high fantasy, cinematic build, where they have lots of abilities that have spent their character points on that require them to spend vitality points. But they give them lots of cinematic abilities, that, lots of dynamic things where they're leaping and jumping and slashing multiple parties and doing attacks that do damage to like bunches of people at the same time. And it's just this really wonderfully dynamic active method that gives the character lots of versatility. Okay? Lots of lots of superhero landings, if you get my point. Then you got the other person. And they are a basic sword and board fighter type. Okay? They fight with this literally with a shield and a weapon in one hand. They use a spear for for you know pole arm and they have a short bow just around in case they have to have to ping somebody at a distance. But they are very much about just boom, boom, boom. they are a soldier. Okay? And they have built their character so that they spend no vitality points. They are far less dynamic than the cinematic person. But all of their character points have been spent on passive abilities. They can't do as many things, and their attacks will never do as much damage as the cinematic person. However, their pool of vitality will never be spent on anything other than making sure that they stay standing. Um, there was a uh, prestige class, and I think it was in 3.5, that lets dwarves take on this ability, kick on uh, uh, abilities that made them incredibly difficult to hit and harm. They became incredibly tough. They would stand their ground, and their attacks would be relatively weak. And the idea was is that <clears throat> their weapon was their compatriots. That's how they hurt the enemy. They got in the enemy's face. They just would not go down, and that gave their companions the ability to kill the bad dudes. So this sword and board dude is not quite as severe as that, but still, they've built the character so that, that they go in and they slow up, boom, boom, when they just do not stop. And they have magic items and, and to back this up, and again, they're all passive. Nothing rise from vitality points, and say it's only some basic bonuses to hit. Um, there's no dynamic response to the situation at hand. Okay, so it's, but they've got good quality stuff like you know adamantian sword and and a mithril shield, so it doesn't slow them down as much. And you get the idea. The person has put a lot of effort and time and and thought into building a very solid, well-equipped character that is just completely passive with no active vitality point spending. Okay, so now that you've listened to me ramble for eight minutes to get to this point in my video, here's my question. Are they even? Or does one of them have an advantage over the other? Let's say they both have 100 vitality points and 15 wound points. So they're exactly the same. Okay? So the number of points hasn't changed. They're the same level. They have the same amount of money that was spent on all their gears over the over the over their career. It's just as one is completely dynamic build and the other is a completely passive build. Now the sword and board guy is never gonna be able to do as much damage. But they're gonna be able to fight for days. Just keep going. Because their vitality is nothing but keeping them alive. It's their luck, their training. They are just in their oh, well, keep going. Well, the other person can have a really high output, but it's more variable. Their, their output is, is going to be highly dependent on how many vitality points they have, how the person playing the character wants to spend those vitality points. Are they spending them on defensive abilities? Are they spending them on offensive abilities? Are they doing dynamic things other than direct attacks that might affect the uh, their ability to survive and the ability of their enemy to die? Um, so it's, it's very cinematic on one side. It's very boom, 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 methodical on the other. That's the word I'm looking for, methodical. Are they even? Is it a fair 
bite. Because one of the problems I have with this kind of a system is the kind of the same problem I have with character, with player currency, not class currency. Like, like if you have sciatic points like in 3.5 or Pathfinder in the, in the uh, sciatic system from Dreamers Guard Press, still the best spell point system I've ever read in my entire career. Um, those are class specific. You have them based on your class, how many you get, and your intelligence, how many you get as a bonus. And they fuel your abilities, but they have nothing to do with your species, and they have nothing to do with your body. Okay? So you could have completely a character with a really high number of psionic points, be very frail, and still be very dangerous. They'd be glass canning quite easily. Um, I've never been a fan of the player currency, where the current where player can spend points that affect like how many times they get the roll, or they or they get to s spend something and say, oh, this scene's going to go in this direction instead of that direction. The narrative structure, I never liked that. Okay, I never have. And I don't. I'm not thrilled with the idea that two different characters are going to have potentially such different situations based on how they've built the character. And you may say, but lo and behold, they chose those things. But if you give me player currency, you say, here's a bunch of, you know, chits or dice or something, and you can spend them to modify your roles over time. I personally am never going to spend those dice, those points. Never. Because I don't know when to spend them. You will detract from my enjoyment of the game because I now have to worry about when do I spend those things on the table in front of me. Whatever their tokens, whatever tokens, dice, points, it doesn't matter. And I'm just never going to do it. And so I'm going to end up as a less powerful character as compared to my compatriots in the party sitting at the table because I'm never going to spend them. So let's hope the mechanics, the, the game allows mechanics that give me a bonus or something else if you don't have those points. Because otherwise, I'm always going to be behind the bell curve. And to me, the structure of Radiance does kind of bother me because I'm never going to know when should I spend those points for the dynamic action or when should I be conservative and just be the sword and board dude. And so I'm going to always want to take the character that's the sword and board dude. So I don't have to worry about it. Even though there are lots of classes within Radiance, which sound really cool, the idea of spending your life's force and making your character more brittle as an encounter goes on bugs the crap out of me. But I don't know the math. So, somebody... Are they even? Are they standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with roughly the same chance of walking out of that fight? Or does one have a distinct advantage over the other? I've rambled on long enough. Thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it. If anybody out there is familiar with the Radiant System, please tell me if they have experience in this. Am I talking out of my butt? Do I not have any clue what I'm discussing? Or... Am I discussing a legitimate issue within the system or any other kind of a system that uses life force to fuel the abilities? If you take a passive build and you take an active build, are they the same for a toe-to-toe -to -toe encounter? Thank you for your time. I hope you have an answer, because I don't.